Hey, praise the Lord. Peace and greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is I, Brother Clinton, once again, and you're back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. If you have your Holy Bible, King James Version, and I hope you do, please open up with me, pardon me, please open up with me to 1 John chapter 5, and I want to talk to you about something that I've spoken about many times before, and I'm probably going to be speaking about it many times into the future. And that is the seventh verse of the fifth chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And the reason that I'm speaking about this is because as a Christian, being a Christian, when I witness to people that go to church and I tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ, one of the things that, one of the very important things that I have need of to tell them is as the Bible declares that God is one. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's not God the Son, and there is no Trinity. And I know that that shocks a lot of people. Because we were all taught that God is a trinity from our youth. We were all raised in a Roman world, and we were all taught the Babylonian slash Roman Catholic doctrine of the trinity. Whether you're a Catholic or a Protestant, or even if you're an atheist or a Buddhist or whatever, you've probably been taught that God is a trinity of persons, and that's a lie. For those of us who are Christians, we understand the scripture, the word of God. We have the word of God in us, and we know that the Bible doesn't contain a single word that says anything about God being a trinity of persons. And when I minister this to people, when I witness to people who go to church and I tell them that God is one, as the Bible says, and that he's not a trinity and there is no such thing as a trinity of gods mentioned anywhere in the Bible, 90% of the time what they will answer me with is, well, what about 1 John 5, 7? And I totally understand why people come back at me with that because we have all been taught that Father Son, and Holy Ghost are three persons of a trinity. And we've also been taught to think that the Bible says things that it doesn't say. We were taught this in church all of our lives. Those of us who were raised in church, we were taught in church all of our lives to imagine that the Bible says things that it doesn't say. And so these two lies, among many others, were taught to us. We were taught that, number one, that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are a trinity of persons when the Bible doesn't say anything like that anywhere. And we were also taught that 1 John 5, 7 says Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, even though it doesn't. That's the second thing, okay? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not written in 1 John 5, 7. If you'll look at it again, you'll see that. And so that's what I want to talk to you about briefly. I'm not here to argue. And I want to let you know that the comment section below is not going to be for theological arguments. If you want to argue, with all due respect, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Because the, the Word of God isn't up for debate, and I'm not here to argue. I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you have earnest questions, praise the Lord. I'm happy to help you. But if you want to argue just for the sake of arguing because you, you think that what you believe is right and you don't want to hear the Word of God, you'll have to go somewhere else. I'm just letting you know that, to be polite. I don't mean to be you know to sound arrogant at all. But praise the Lord. <clears throat> I believe the Word of God. The Word of God is in me. Those of us who are born again, we're born of the Word of God. That's what the Bible says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And that Word is in me, and that's the Word that I want to share with you. Praise the Lord. So, if you'll go to 1 John chapter 5, let's look at verse 7, and then we'll read a little bit of the context. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Period. And it means just what it says. But what it doesn't mean is what it doesn't say. And if you'll notice, if you'll read the verse again, you'll notice that it doesn't say anything about the Son of God. The Son of God is not mentioned in 1 John 5, 7. <clears throat> the word Son isn't in that verse. It's not in that sentence. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. Three what? Well, the scripture doesn't say. So the Bible says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Which means that if we're going to be speaking anything as Christians, then we should be speaking what the Bible says. And if we have to make up words and phrases that are not in the Bible in order to teach people what we believe, then what we believe is wrong. 
It's just that simple. So if we have to add words to the scripture or take away words from the scripture in order to teach whatever it is that we believe, then we need to recognize the fact that what we believe is wrong. The Bible says, God's word is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So, the word son isn't in this verse, and there's no mention of the son of God in this verse anywhere. Now, I know that you're saying, well, but, but the word is the son. And I know why you're saying that. It's because you were taught that all of your life in church. And guess what? So was I. But that's a lie. The word of God isn't the son of God. And I can prove that to you. If you go to the beginning of the Gospel of John, you'll see that it says, In the beginning was the Word, with a capital W. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see? So if we believe the Scripture, then we know that the Word is not the Son of God. The Word was God. Now, who is God? Every time that you read the Scripture, the Holy Bible, any place in the Holy Bible that you read the word God with a capital G, who is it referring to? It's referring to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the Almighty God. That's who God is. God is not a man. God didn't become a man. God will never become a man. The Bible says God is a spirit. And the Bible says that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So you see, it was the Son of God who was made of a woman. God wasn't born. Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, did not give birth to a God. She gave birth to a man, the Son of God. The Bible says the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was made of a woman. God was not made of a woman. The Bible says that the Son of God gave himself a ransom for all. And that he died and was buried and rose again. God did not die. God was not buried. God did not rise from the dead. God raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. So you see, the Bible says that the word was God. The Bible does not say that the word is the son of God. The Bible says that the word of God is in the son of God. God said to Moses, I will raise up a prophet from among your brethren like unto you, and I will put my words in his mouth. And it shall come to pass that he shall speak whatsoever I shall command him. And whosoever shall not hearken unto the words that he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now who is a spirit? Jesus said, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. God is not a man. God did not become a man. And God will never become a man. God was not born of a virgin, and God did not die on a cross. God was not buried, and God was not risen from the dead. You see, these are all things that happened to the Son of God. The Son of God is a man, a human male child that was conceived in the womb of a woman. You see, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that's what Christians declare by the Holy Ghost who is in us. The Holy Ghost is God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when Mary was pregnant with her firstborn son, that that which was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. The only Holy Ghost there is, is God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus Christ, the Son of God, referred to the Spirit of God that was in him as the Father. Because that's who he is. Praise the Lord. So if we go back to 1 John chapter 5, we can see that the Son of God is not at all mentioned in verse 7. 
However, the Son of God is being referred to in this entire passage. And that's what I want to talk to you about, and I want to try to make this brief. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask any earnest questions that you have, and I'll be happy to answer you according to the scripture. You can post a comment below in the comment section, or if you prefer to email me, there's my email address right, right there in the information box. And you're, you're welcome to write me an email, and yours truly will be the one to see your email and send you a reply, so long as you're earnest, of course. So, 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So, why are these three one? And what, what, what are these? What, what, they're three what? Are they three persons? Well, no, the scripture doesn't say that they're three persons. Well, but I was taught all my life that they're three persons. Well, I understand that. I was taught that too. The Bible doesn't say that they're three persons. The Bible just says these three are one. So there could be three things. They could be three titles. They could just be three words. Or they could be three of the ways that God Almighty has borne witness of something from heaven. And that's exactly what it is. In fact, if you come down to verse 11 in the same chapter, the Bible says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Praise the Lord. Remember that the Lord Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Remember when Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What was he talking about? He was talking about the word of the Father that was in him because he is that prophet. That prophet, the one that Moses wrote about. The one of whom God said, I will raise up a prophet from among thy people like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth. This is why the Son of God is called the Word of God. This is why the, the Bible says in Revelation 19.13, and his name is called the Word of God, because the Word of God is in him. But the Word of God isn't a man. The Word of God is spirit. The Bible says that the Word of God is spirit. The Bible does not say that the Word of God is a man or that the Word of God became a man. So the Bible says of the Word of God, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. So life is in the word of God. The word of God is that seed which brings forth life. This is why a person who is born again is born of the word of God. Because the word is the seed. Luke chapter 8 verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. James chapter 1 verse 18. Uh, God uh, hath, hath of his own will begat he us by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So you see, a person who's born again is born of the word of God, according to the scripture. And the word of God is that seed which brings forth life in a man. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so it is that the word of God is life, and God hath put that life in his Son, Jesus Christ, and he hath put that life in his son, Jesus Christ, in such a way that it is communicated to all those around him and all those around us by words, which people can hear. Some people can hear it, some people can't. And that's the way that God has ordained it to be. And so the Bible says in 1 John 5, 11, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. What is the life that is in the son of God? It's the Word. The Word. This is why the Son of God said, He that eateth me, he that eateth me, uh, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. He wasn't talking about the meat on his body. It was the Word of the living God that was in him, talking about his flesh. His flesh is that which we are reading, that which I'm speaking to you right now. That's the flesh of the Word of God. The word of God is meat indeed. This is why Jesus also stood up at the last day of the feast and said, If any man drink, pardon me, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And as it is written, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now how can you drink a man? You can't drink a man, but you can drink of the fountain of living waters. 
who is the Almighty God who was in the man. God was in Christ. You see, the Bible says that God was in Christ. The Bible doesn't say that Christ is a co-equal God with his Father. You see, the teaching that God was in Christ is found in the Bible. The teaching that Christ was a co-equal God with his Father is paganism. It's, it's theology. It's not found in the scripture at all. Theology is the complete antithesis of being a Christian. Theology is witchcraft. That's exactly what it is. It is the purposeful manipulation of words and phrases in foreign languages in order to deceive people into thinking that the Bible says things that it doesn't say for the purpose of teaching doctrines that are not taught in the Bible. That's what theology is. Period. End of story. That's what it is. That's not just an unfortunate byproduct of it. That's what it is. That's what it's for. That's why the serpent brought it forth. But there's other video messages on this channel about that, so I digress. If you have questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to send you a video message that will explain that for you. So if we just back up to verse 6, okay? Let's just back up to 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. And now that we have a little bit of the context, I think we can understand if we have ears to hear what's going on here. It says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Okay, for those of us who are Christians, I think we understand this. And this letter, by the way, was addressed to Christians. This letter, just like all the letters of the New Testament, from Romans all the way to Jude, is addressed to Christians. Okay, the letters or the epistles of the New Testament are not addressed to the whole world. Although anyone in the whole world can read them and is invited to read them, we must understand when we read these letters that they are not addressed to everyone in the whole world. They are addressed to the saints. To Christians, people that are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with his spirit, and are walking according to his word. And this is a letter. It's not a theological puzzle to be figured out by the brainy elite that have been to Bible seminary. In fact, those people will never be able to figure this out. And God has ordained it to be that way. Jesus said, I thank thee, Father, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it was thy good pleasure to do so. Praise the Lord. Jesus said that. I didn't make it up. It's written in the scripture. So, verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Now, I think we understand what he means by that. By water, meaning that he was baptized in the Jordan River by John, and blood. He had another baptism to accomplish. And he said, how am I straightened until it be accomplished? And that was the baptism of his death. And so this is he that came by water and blood. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Now John is going to repeat this again in verse 8. But before he says that, he's completing the sentence, or completing the teaching. And for by the way, for those of you who think that 1 John 5, 7 was added in later by someone else, that's foolishness and nonsense. And the passage of this scripture would make no sense without verse 7 if you believe the scripture. And so to imagine that 1 John 5, 7 was added in later by somebody else and that John didn't write it is just foolishness and nonsense. And if you'd like to know more about that, please ask me and I'll be happy to send you a video message, a link to a video message that explains that in detail. And it's not long. It doesn't need to be. I think it's 15 minutes long or something like that. Um, so he says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Okay, so here we have the water, the blood, and the Spirit. And John says, And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. The Spirit is the Spirit of God. And the Spirit is truth. This is why Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Okay? This was not the Son of God speaking about his carnal body. It was the Word of God, which is spirit and life. It was the Holy Ghost speaking about himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. The Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is spirit 
and life. The word of God is the word that comes out of the mouth of God. The word of God is God. The Holy Ghost is God. The only Holy Ghost that there is, is God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There isn't any other Holy Ghost. That's the only Holy Ghost that there is. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who begat a child in the womb of a virgin of his own people Israel. He overshadowed her and caused her to become with child. That which was conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, saith the Scripture. Praise the Lord. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. All right, now what's John talking about here? He's talking about bearing witness. John is writing these things by the Holy Ghost to the saints, and he's talking about bearing witness. And it is written in the law that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Now it's not that we need witnesses to believe God's word, because God's word is true whether men believe it or not. But the fact is that God had given us many witnesses which testify of the truth of his word. And it's not because he needs anybody to back him up, but it's because he is righteous and he intends to use all these witnesses against those who have not believed his word on the day of judgment, that he may be righteous in his judgment. Hallelujah. Let God be true and every man a liar, that thou mightest be just in thy sayings, saith the scripture. And so God has given us witness, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So here John mentions the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. Now listen to what he says. For there are three that bear record in heaven. To bear record is the same thing as bearing witness. Okay, they're just two different ways of saying the same thing. They're not different at all. Bearing record and bearing witness are two ways of saying the same thing. And the Bible says in verse 11, this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The Son of God brought the life of God into the world. The life of God is his word, which is spirit. His word, which is able to be communicated by a man speaking it to another man. From faith to faith. From my faith to your faith. And then you believe it, and you preach it, and from your faith to the other person's faith. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. How does that happen? By the word, the word of God. The word of God is in God, and he put it in his son Jesus Christ, and he came and spoke it, and his disciples wrote it down so we could read it, and we read it and we get it in us. And we believe it and obey the gospel and become Christians. And then we preach this same word, which is spirit and life, to other people. And they believe it and become Christians, hopefully. So the righteousness of God is revealed therein from faith to faith. By the word of God. It's spoken and people believe it. And then they become Christians. It's really just that simple. It's not the Babylonian Catholic mystery of, well, the word is the Logos, and, and you have to understand what a Logos is, and you have to understand the original Greek, and the word of God was face-to-face -face with God and two separate persons and co-equal and co-eternal and co-existent and pre-existent and all that foolishness and nonsense that people learn in seminary because they don't believe the word of God and they're not called of God. But the word of God says what it means, and it means what it says, and it's for little children. It's not for theologians. It's for little children. And except you receive the, the kingdom of God as a little child, Jesus said that ye shall in no wise enter therein. So let's continue in, in verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. These three are one. It doesn't say these three are three persons. It doesn't say these three are co-equal or co-eternal, or co-existent, or co-anything. It says these three are one. Why did John say these three are one? Because these three are one. Because the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are three titles, 
or terms that refer to the same person. God. God is the Father. He's called the Father because he begat a son. And he's also called the Father because by means of his son, other sons are adopted into his family through his only begotten son. So he's a father because he begat a son in the womb of a virgin of his people, Israel. And through the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, and his gospel, we who believe his gospel become adopted and are given the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And so God is called the Father because he has sons. That's the only reason that someone be, would be called a father. It's not just this ethereal being who's named the Father, just for no reason. He's called the Father because that's what he is. Now what about the Word? This is the part where Trinitarians stumble because they imagine that the word Word here doesn't mean the word Word. It, it, they imagine that it means the word Son, and it doesn't. It doesn't say that, and it doesn't mean that. And there's no good reason, according to anything that's written anywhere in the Bible, for us to believe that the word word is referring to the Son of God. There's no good reason at all for that. The only, pre the only reason that people believe that the word of God means the Son of God is because of the nonsense of theology, the witchcraft of theology, which hath hypnotized people and caused them to imagine that when they read the word word anywhere else in the English language that it means a word, units of communication that are spoken. But when we read the word word in the Bible, in, in, in the Gospel of John chapter 1, and here in 1 John chapter 5, that it doesn't mean a word anymore, that it means the Son, or that it means Christ. But it doesn't mean that. And there's no good reason to think that it does, according to the Scripture. The Word is the Word, the Word of God. The words that are written on these pages, that's the Word of God. In the beginning, again, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word with a capital W, just like here, with a capital W. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Bible doesn't say the Word was face to face with God. And those ignorant Greek scholars who want to try to fool you with theology and tell you that, well, in the original Greek, it means that the Word was face to face with God. Well, they're filled with nonsense, and they're trying to fill you with nonsense. If John had meant to write the Word was face to face with God, then that's what he would have written. But he didn't write that. If you want to know what the Bible says in the original Greek, then here it is. It's, it's translated for you in English. You don't need some fool to tell you how it was originally, originally written in these so-called original manuscripts, because that fool has never seen the original manuscripts, and he doesn't know anybody who has ever seen the original manuscripts. And of that, I can assure you. So if you want to know what was written in the original manuscripts, here it is. It's called the Holy Bible. King James Version. If you speak English, this is the Word of God. This book contains the words that were written in the original manuscripts, translated perfectly into the English language. Praise the Lord. So the Bible does not say that the Word was face to face with God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What word? God's word. The words that he spoke from the beginning. When was the beginning? It was when God started to speak and he said, let there be light. That was the beginning. When he began to speak things and they began to exist because he spoke them into existence. That's the word. It's not a separate person. It's not a co-equal deity. It's not another God. It's God's word. It's just what the Bible says it is. So there are three, there are three that bear record in heaven. What are they bearing record of? The fact that God hath given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. That's what they're bearing record of. For there are three that bear record in heaven, and there are three that bear witness in earth. What are they bearing record or witness of? Of the fact that God hath given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father... We know who the Father is. It's God. The Word. Well, we know who the Word is. The Word is the Word of God. The Word is the Word of God. The Word was God. God's Word is God himself. 
It's not a person of a trinity. It's God himself. The word of God is God himself. Just like my word is me and your word is you. You are known by the things that you speak. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is in your heart comes out of your mouth. Your word is who you are. And so it is with God. And the word was God. God has testified by his word from heaven that he hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son the father the word and the holy ghost who is the holy ghost the holy ghost is the god and father of our lord jesus christ and so there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the holy ghost and these are three terms that refer to the same person god the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So for that reason, John said, and these three are one. God is the Father. He's called the Father because that's what he is. God is the Word because the Word is the Word of God. And God is the Holy Ghost because he is holy and he is a ghost or a spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is God. There is no other Holy Ghost than God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus said, do you, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The Father in me, he doeth the works. What was he talking about, the Father in me? Were there two spirits in him, the Father and the Holy Ghost? No, the Father is the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus called the Holy Ghost the Father. So you see, 1 John 5, 7 doesn't mention anything about the Son of God. And 1 John 5, 7 doesn't mention anything about any trinity of persons. And the truth is that if you had never been exposed to the religious teachings of Rome, and the only thing that you had ever been exposed to was the Holy Bible, you would have never imagined anything about God being a trinity of persons, and you would have never imagined that 1 John 5, 7 says anything about any persons at all. Because it doesn't. The only reason that people think it does is because of the, the witchcraft of theology whereby they have been beguiled into imagining that the Word of God says things that it clearly does not say. You see, the Son of God is not mentioned in 1 John 5, 7. There's no mention of Him at all. And there's no mention of any persons at all. It's about three of the ways that God hath borne witness from heaven of the fact that He hath given us eternal life. And that life is in his son. And then John completed the sentence in verse 8. And he said, and, the, and there are three that bear witness in earth. Remember he was talking about the, the, the water and the blood and the spirit in verse 6? Well, he's still talking about that. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Now he didn't say these are three persons. Because they're not three persons. The spirit and the water and the blood are not three persons. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are not three persons. In fact, the phrase three persons isn't found anywhere in the entire Bible. And the only place that the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are used in the same sentence in the whole Bible is in one verse of the Scripture where Jesus was talking about a name. His name. He wasn't talking about any persons. He was talking about a name. He said, All power is given unto me, in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's the only time in the entire Bible that the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are used together in the same sentence. I guarantee you. Check it out and you'll see. And in that sentence, Jesus was not making any reference at all to any trinity of persons. He wasn't making reference to any three anything. He was making reference to one thing, his name. And 1 John 5, 7 doesn't say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, like we were all taught that it does. Rome just told us, well, it's, it might not exactly say that, but that's what it means. Just don't question it. 
It's the Trinity. It's a mystery. You'll never understand it. Why do they say it's a mystery? You'll never understand it. Because it's ridiculous and it makes no sense and it's not written in the Bible and they don't want you to question it. But if you'll read the scripture, as Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So let's read from verse 6 to verse 8 again. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness. Beareth witness. This is what John is starting to talk about. He's starting to talk about bearing witness. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. You see, these three in heaven and these three things in earth are bearing witness of the Son of God. The Son of God does not bear witness of himself. He himself said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So the Son of God does not bear witness of himself. It is God that beareth witness of his Son. And God hath borne witness of his Son from heaven and in the earth. And this is the witness which God hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Why? Because if you believe on the Son of God, you've obeyed his gospel, you've been baptized in his name, and you have his Spirit in you. So if you have the Holy Ghost in you, which is the Spirit of your Father, the Almighty God, then you have the witness in you. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. The record, there it is again. How many times is witness and record mentioned in this passage? I think, I don't know, I'm just going to guess, maybe four or five times. I haven't counted them. Let's count them. In verse 6. Okay, witness in verse 6. Record in verse 7. Witness in verse 8. Witness in verse 9. Twice in verse 9. That's five times. Witness in verse 10. That's six times. Record in verse 10. That's seven times and 11. Verse 11, eight times in this passage, the words witness and record are used. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son of God, pardon me, he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Why? Because the life is in the word of the living God. The Word of God is the seed that brings forth life, and the Word of God is in the Son of God. And so it is that if you have the Son of God, you have life, and if you have not the Son of God, you have not life. And so we can see that there is, if you can see the, the truth, if you, can, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you can see that in this passage of the Scripture, there's nothing about any trinity of gods. Nothing. There's nothing about any trinity of persons. And I know that those of you who are Trinitarians, you don't like it when I use the, the phrase trinity of gods. But that's what Trinitarians believe. Even though they don't say that, they, they deny that fact. Trinitarians will say, oh, I don't believe in a trinity of gods. I believe in one God, but in three persons. But if you ask them what, what who those three persons are, they'll say, well, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Each, each equally God, and yet each distinct one from the other. So, if you have God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that's three gods. And if you believe that they're all equally God, but yet they're distinct one from another, which means this one isn't this one, and this one isn't this one, and this one isn't this one, they're, they're three gods. Three different entities who are not the same person, who are each individually God. That's three gods. For anybody to deny that is just insanity. Or either that person is a pathological liar, one of the two. But you can't say that you believe in three persons called God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and then you and then say that you only believe in one God. Because you're either lying, or you're nuts, <laughs> or you've been deceived. 
And that was the case with me for many years, and that is the case with everyone who believes in a trinity of gods. There is no trinity of gods. The Son of God is not mentioned in 1 John 5, 7. There is no trinity of anything mentioned in 1 John 5, 7. There is only mentioned three ways that God hath borne record from heaven of the fact that he hath given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. God bore witness three ways from heaven and three ways in the earth. And so the scripture says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. If in the mouth of two or three witnesses a man can be put to death because we receive the witness of men, well, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, then you're rejoicing right now, and I rejoice with you. And if you don't, and you just want to, you know, go, you know, take to your keyboard to revile and call names and, and quote from, you know, Catholic theologians who you call church fathers and all that foolishness and nonsense, um, you're going to be wasting your time with me because I don't believe in that nonsense. I believe the Word of God. I'm a Christian. Praise the Lord. So if if you have questions, earnest questions, and I can be of help to you in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Here I am. I'm only speaking as the oracles of God. I have added nothing. I've taken away nothing. I haven't used theology to try to twist anything around and say this word doesn't mean what it says. It's been mistranslated or all that stuff. I've just read to you the word of God as it's written. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Amen.